去。I'm Jay Fidel here on Think Tech, and it's a given Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock block. And we are joined by Max Pizier. He's a researcher for ePrink, uh, and he's normally in, in Washington, but today he's in Long Island City, New York City, and Queens, as a matter of fact. Welcome to the show, Max. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Thank, it's great to be here. Great to talk to you again. Yeah, um, well, yeah, there's a lot of things going on, and we styled this. Uh, uh, these are interesting times for energy. And I suppose uh, we should talk first about it, about natural gas, because that's the that's the American thing these days, isn't it? It's it's taking the country by storm, if not the world well, by storm. Certainly, uh, um, natural gas is uh, something that's uh, um, on an uptick in terms of production here in the United States, in the continental United States. Uh, it's uh, there's so much gas we can't use it ourselves, so we've. Uh, uh, we're trying to find as many export markets as possible. That includes Mexico, potentially Canada, uh, and also the expansion of uh, uh, liquefied natural gas exports out of the U.S. Gulf Coast and um, the Atlantic Coast uh, here, here in the United States. So uh, you're seeing huge projects develop. Uh, some have already been commissioned uh, in Texas um, and also uh, Atlanta and, and, and Maryland. Um, challenges are that are taking place because of uh, the trade wars, uh, especially with China and India, is, is finding customers, new customers, for all of these uh, natural gas uh, exports. But uh, thankfully, that means there's uh, abundant supplies uh, here in New York and along the East Coast as we're enduring this, this early freeze. Uh, we, we've got plenty of heat. So um, Come on in. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. So in New York right now, there's a, a frost happening. It's uh, it's only early November, and uh, it's colder and expect expected to be colder still um, by reason of the you know the, the I guess the, the cold coming down from the Arctic, which is part of climate change. Um, and in New York right now, it's cold. And the question I put to you, Max, is well, if it's cold, then people need more heat. And if people need more heat, they need more fuel. Um, so what does it look like for the Northeast when it gets really cold this winter? Um, thankfully, for uh, in existing installations, there, there's uh, no dearth of uh, uh, natural gas supplies, no dearth of uh, heating oil supplies. Um, as we were discussing before we got on the air, what's interesting is is that uh, New York State is going the way of California. Uh, you have a, a considerable, considerable amount of environmentalists, uh, NIMBYs, uh, that are uh, uh, becoming increasingly vocal and having the ear of uh, key uh, authorities within the state of New York. Um, and again, re referencing our, our uh, discussion before we got on the air, what that has led to is uh, they've prevented the expansion of new natural gas supplies into coming into uh, Long Island, the lower part of the state of New York, and also new natural gas supplies uh, into the county just north of uh, New York City. Mm -hmm. um, and given all that, that that's prevented uh, that's prevented the new the the, the, the local operators the uh, in uh, Consolidated Edison and, and, and National Grid. Uh, are the two local operators that deliver natural gas into residences and commercial establishments. They have said, if we can't get uh, new pipelines into the region, we can't uh, provide new hookups to new developments, any new residences, any new businesses, either in Long Island or in uh, Westchester County, which is the county just north of uh, the city of New York. So why can't, get, why can't, can't they get the pipelines in? Who's standing in the way? Uh, a variety of people. Um, the 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 wholesale gas coming into uh, Long Island. Uh, that's uh, a comp the companies that's building that is Williams, 
and they are under the jurisdiction of the, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission in Washington. Um, there, there have been certain, um, they've provisioned it, they've, they've per, uh, received appropriate permits from uh, FERC, the, uh, uh, the commission in Washington, but the environmentalists have, have caught the ear of uh, the governor of, the, of New York State, Andrew Cuomo. So he's put out orders saying that uh, these pipelines will not get built. That in turn has, has uh, caused the, the operators to uh, approach any new business, any new business, say uh, a pizza parlor or um, a barbecue joint, um, they will not uh, provide natural gas uh, for their commercial operations. Um, so as well, you were telling me a story about one particular um, pizza restaurant. Can you can you tell us that story? What happened to them? R sure, absolutely. It's, it's a barbecue joint. Uh, so it's, okay. on, it's on right on the beach, right? It's okay. uh, on, on the beach in, 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 in rock in the Rockaway section of Queens, uh, one of the boroughs of, Man of New York City. Um, they received all the permits for the construction uh, of their restaurant. They put in gas ovens. They were ready to open up at the beginning of summer. But National Grid, the operator said, uh, we're not going to deliver heat. Uh, I'm sorry, we're not going to deliver natural gas. Uh, we can't because the, the governor is preventing us from uh, expand, giving us available supplies, giving us adequate supplies. So through give and take, all sorts of uh, uh, pronouncements, for three months this, this establishment uh, wasn't open. Finally, the operators of the of the of the uh, barbecue place uh, put in electric ovens, downsized downsized their menu, and increased their prices so that they could be open still in time for the summer season. Um, but of course, they have no natural gas, so they can't heat the premises uh, for the winter. Mm -hmm. So we have a day like today. Anyway, the governor. All this made headlines. The governor heard about it, and he he insisted that um, National Grid, the operator, provide hookups to this barbecue joint um, in the beach section of Rockway, uh, which they did. And so, thankfully, we we you and I, Jane, on your next trip to New York, we can go out to this barbecue joint and stay warm through uh, a winter day, a cold winter day, like we're having here in no early November. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold you to that, Max. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so, okay. So the, the thing with natural gas, uh, at least in the East Coast um, on the mainland, is is that there's uh, talk about a tax. How does that work? Well, how is that affecting you know the development of the of the resource and the supply? Well, um, we at Eprink also uh, uh, are concerned about LNG exports, and so. Uh, the, the key source for natural gas close to the New York State is what's known as the Marcellica Utis, Marcellus Utica Formation on the western side of Pennsylvania, eastern side of Ohio, and most of West Virginia. That's about 400 miles from, from, uh, from where, where I am right now. Um, so there's ample supplies there, but because you can't get a pipeline across the state of Pennsylvania, a new pipeline across the state of Pennsylvania into this particular region, you have plenty of gas going into Texas for uh, into the U.S. Gulf Coast to at very cheap prices. Um, so uh, the Japanese and other constituencies in the Pacific are happy to receive our low-priced uh, liquefied natural gas exports. So it's 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 that sort of thing. Um, you know, I just to to, to to sort of continue the story. I, I uh, you know. It's not just here in the state of New York. There are interesting stories like this also happening in California. And I, I don't know if you've heard about this, but um, given all the environmental uh, requirements the state of California has put on its constituents, one of them is to diminish the use of natural gas, to cut off uh, uh, new natural gas hookups. So you're having the notorious cases in Berkeley. But what's really interesting is, is that um, you have Chinese restaurants established in the San Gabriel Valley of, of Los Angeles. They have gone to Sacramento protesting the fact that they will not have natural gas um, in, in their particular restaurants. So just imagine trying to run a walk 
um, using electric power in place of natural gas. You can't cycle it as quickly as you do. Mm -hmm. You can't. Uh, so it's just it's it's not just New, New York State. We, we also have this happening in, in California. And I brought these examples up for you just, you know, so being in Hawaii, you can laugh at the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, the common denominator is restaurants. <laughs> So far, yes. <laughs> so what about, yeah, what about and, the, the, go ahead. Okay, and, and the story gets better here. So, um, you know, just just when you thought, well, okay, only the, the strange things, uh, only strange things are going to happen on the coast, in the coastal parts of uh, the continental United States. Um, we at Abprink, well, we're, we're talking to some of the pipeline uh, operators and we said, well, but you know, given, all of these things that are happening on, on the coast, certainly you in Texas must be okay. Everything must be okay for you. And they said, you know, well, we have problems also. Um, and they use the expression where the far right meets the far left. That's what's happening in Texas. So you have ranchers that want to protect grazing rights. Um, and you have environmentalists that uh, want to stand, stand in the way of every new uh, pipeline construction. Th the two least likely alliances are suddenly um, uh, joining forces and preventing, um, now I wouldn't say preventing, but they're impeding. You know, they're, they're, they're providing resistance to, to new natural gas developments, exactly where you have this, one of the places where you have this bounty of new natural gas production. Mm. So, so it's, uh, it's, so laugh some more. <laughs> Well, how is it? How is it playing out? I mean, they must be they must be contending their positions uh, before government in government um, in the courts. How are they slugging it out? I don't know the details of Texas. I I, I know um, in in California, uh, the, the constituents, the Chinese restaurant constituents, uh, went all the way up to Sacramento and said, "Yeah, uh, the, the state capital," and, and and protested. Um, in New York State, you have uh. uh you're going to have hearings on Thursday in, in, in Albany, the state's capital. So, uh, so it's an ongoing, um, ongoing process. I mean, what, what, yeah, interestingly, even the, uh, the blue collar newspaper in, in the city of New York, uh, the daily news has come out and said, listen, people, you really shouldn't stand in the way of, of, of these pipelines. This is to your benefit. Not, it's not a detriment. So, um, so those are the kind of, those those are the kinds of situations that uh, that are in play. Well, if you stop the pipelines, how do you affect the price to the consumer? Does that mean people have to pay more for fuel and heating and whatnot? Absolutely, right. So uh, um, this, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, it sticks it to the residences and the uh, the commercial uh, businesses. Uh, at some point, con consolidate the various. Uh, Local operators, Consolidated Edison, National Grid, are, are going to have charge, are going to have to charge more for uh, energy prices because uh, once you create that kind of shortage, um, you have to rationalize uh, the the remaining supply. Mm -hmm. so, is the national is the uh, either Consolidated Edison or National Grid um, providing using gas for the generation of electrical electrical energy? Um, I would think, I think so. Um, I'm not wholly certain. I know in the case of Consolidated, they have plants that are fired by uh, um, natural gas. Uh, I would think also the, uh, the same situation for, for natural grid. In part, this expanded pipeline that uh, from New Jersey into um, across the bay into uh, Long Island, uh, that would be uh, also gas for uh, a major natural gas plant uh, in Nassau County, which is uh, right adjacent to the city of New York, right adjacent mm -hmm. to Queens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, if that if that's the case, people can get plenty of electrical energy. But is the electrical energy more expensive than if you took it directly by gas? Um, it it becomes expensive. Uh, it, it's also problematic in terms of if you don't have a, a premise, a residence, or a commercial uh, uh, premise. Uh, set up for the, uh, to use um, electricity to generate heat, then um, you're in a difficult situation. Uh, you, you, not only 
not only would the price of uh, existing energy become more expensive, but you also have to uh, 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 install appropriate uh, components so that uh, to utilize uh, the available energy. Say if it's if it's if it's, if it's electricity, then um, uh, I, I can't think of the appropriate term, but uh, you know, just uh, premises have to be reconfigured uh, for, for using electricity. So yeah. Back to our barbecue joint in Rockaway, so they had to uh, install electric ovens because in order just to stay in business. If they were going to go into winter without any natural gas hookup, then yes, they would, they would also have to uh, install some kind of electric heaters uh, to take uh, if if they weren't going to get natural gas into the premises. Yeah. Footnote to that is that we have Hawaii gas and and we have plenty of walks out here in Hawaii, so we have gas. Uh, you know, uh, we have gas uh, being available for those walks. Uh, a lot of people have gas. Restaurants shut down, and uh, so when the Chinese restaurants shut down in in in, in uh, Southern California, we'll all come flying out to uh, to Hawaii for there the Chinese go. food. There you go. That's it. That's <laughs> it. So, in 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 terms of um, you know, the, I take it that the issue is that there are people out there for environmental reasons or possibly business reasons uh, who oppose. The pipelines, and and that's that's kind of a, a new emerging development. You know, when we talked about this before, natural gas seemed to have um, you know all the momentum you would want, and that people were generally in favor of it because it was a cheaper alternative. Uh, but right. now it sounds like we're we're in chapter two here, and chapter two involves um, organizations, individuals, even businesses, and certainly governments who respond to them. Uh, who stand in the way of delivering natural gas around the right. country? And, and so, is this is this a national a national phenomenon right now? It seems to be picking up uh, some pace. Uh, I I named three states. Something like this is also taking place in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's mostly driven by uh, environmentalist constituencies. Uh, no longer do they see natural gas as a bridge fuel. They see any sort of uh, fossil fuel developments, anything that provides continuous fossil fuel uh, usage as uh, they, they want to impede, stand in the way in, in, and favor renewables. So mm -hmm. um, uh, that seems to be the constituency that that, that is engaging in 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 anti-natural gas activities so yeah. even every pipeline becomes a fight ah well that's you know i mean is on the one hand if you um you know you want to stay away from fossil fuel and you don't treat natural gas as a bridge fuel but rather as a fossil fuel um then uh, you know i can i can see that gaining traction somehow and then i wonder what let's assume for just th this discussion max that it does mm -hmm. gain traction that we have an upcoming generation uh, who, uh, you know, uh, concerned about environmental issues, um, and they don't want to see more pipelines. As a matter of fact, they'd like to shut pipelines down. What happens to our energy system in America if 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 that happens? If that takes place? Oh boy, um, you're, you're asking me to predict the, uh, what's going to happen in the future. Well, I I, I think it's a dire situation because. Um, the amount of energy that you can deliver uh, using these existing systems, um, uh, pipelines, uh, natural gas generation facilities, um, they work very efficiently. If, if you want to replace, say, a natural gas fired unit of a reasonable scale, let's say one gigawatt uh, 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 generation, generating capacity, um, the scale of a wind installation that you would need is a magnitude of 400 times larger than the site that you would need to, to, to site a natural gas plant. Yeah, by, by that I mean, say, let's assume this, this natural gas, hypothetical natural gas plant that I'm describing it sits on 200 acres or 100 acres. You would need 400 times that space to have um, to, to be able to site a wind farm to generate the same amount of, of, uh, of electrical energy. For a, a solar generation, you would need 
a hundred times that much mm. uh, of, of the original natural gas plant. So, and you don't have any of these kinds of things installed yet. And they're relatively costly and they, um, they, they're not efficient from the point of view of providing baseload. Baseload is just, you, you want constant electricity available so that if you walk into a room and it's dark, you can turn on the light. Mm. Um, or you have heat generated, uh, things like that. Mm. Solar doesn't, doesn't work during the nighttime. You can't collect energy that way. Um, and when um, it's, people haven't really begun discussing uh, the size requirements, the siding requirements that you need in order to generate an equivalent amount of uh, electricity from a wind farm that you can already generate from a natural gas plant. We have, um, we have two um, wind farm sites that are under protest in Hawaii right now. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's partly NIMBY, uh, maybe other considerations too. Um, but there's a lot of people who are opposed to that, uh, these two wind farm sites. And a part of it is that the, uh, you know, the modern technology on these turbines is uh, they're taller and um, you know, more heavyweight than in the past. And they're you know, up toward nearly 500 feet in height. And that, right. th that bothers people who live nearby. They don't, they don't like to have the huge structure like that shadowing their, you know, their property and their, their lives. Um, so what, we, what, what I get is we have protests on all sides of this. Uh, right. Every time you look, there's a protest. And, and so our national will, if you will, our national um, you know, uh, desire to have clean energy to, or, or more efficient energy, as the case may be, is really sort of in contention right now all around the country. People are protesting this, that, and the other thing. Well, how do you see this unfolding? Because right now, I think all the, all the protests that are happening, both on the mainland and here, over various kinds of installations, they all, uh, as you say, they all slow things down. Right. Um, how, how does it get resolved? I, you know, again, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to say what the future's, uh, how things are going to take place. Um, one, uh, one possibility is just, uh, uh, more frequent discussions, more um, candid dialogue between uh, the various constituencies that are involved. Uh, recently, just you, you brought up climate change before. You know, it's 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 you know, if we're using a Venn, Venn diagram approach here, it's tangential to our discussion here about uh, about natural gas. But you you have proponents of, uh, of of notions of climate change, and you have a scientific community that. Uh, disputes the notion of uh, carbon dioxide generated uh, climate change. Um, the solution that isn't, I isn't the, uh, the scientific community nearly unanimous um, on the whole carbon dioxide issue, and it's man-made and it's affecting the, I, I, the planet. I, I, there was a, there was something in the newspaper last week about how eleven thousand and change scientists all came out. Uh, you know, f for the proposition that climate change was right. not only real, but it was much worse than they had expected 10 or 15 years ago. Okay, I, I, I saw that same item. Um, you know, I, I think there are respected constituencies that uh, dispute uh, those things. I, I, um, uh, there, there are certain people at Princeton, at MIT, at the University of Colorado that uh, don't embrace a catastrophic notion of climate change change brought on uh, by increasing volumes of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So, so the so the pro proposition, and they're not as outspoken as those scientists and that community um, that accepts the notion. So, but the proposition is let's get those two sides, or however many other sides. But there, there might be people who say yes, climate uh, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. But um, let's not expect catastrophic climate change. Mm -hmm. let, let's, uh, you know, it, it, it's not going to be as severe as people say. Our models don't say. No, so some, get some of the, that weather get, lately is severe. Some of that weather is catastrophic. Uh, look what happened in the Caribbean. But let's let's move on. You had some charts, um, and I don't uh, want to lose the benefit of that. Can you tell us about the uh, the graphics that you have? Well, I, I, I there were just. Uh, 
bullet points that I, I, I gave you. Uh, the, the first one covered the, uh, the natural gas situation. Mm -hmm. There you go. That one right there. Uh, the one, one thing that I didn't discuss was the state of New Jersey, uh, the mechanisms that are, are, are taking place there. Um, so I, I, I described Texas where the far right meets the far left. In the state of New Jersey, if you want uh, to thread, place uh, a natural gas pipeline across the state, uh, uh, an interstate pipeline, you, you apply to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission in Washington. And you provide them with all the necessary documentation, which you think uh, are the optimal routes. What people are finding out, uh, the, the people who want to construct the pipelines, is, is that once you've declared uh, the land uh, that you want to traverse, um, that creates an opportunity for the environment. So in the state of New Jersey in particular, what's happening is, is that an, uh, an organization that is funded by uh, the former mayor of uh, the city of New York, uh, Michael Bloomberg, Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Where have they I heard that name recently? I know, you know, <laughs> I, I, it was somewhere out there, you know, presidential candidate, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. <laughs> um, but uh, some organizations funded by him go out and they buy up all the deeds or some of the deeds along the right of way and they uh, donate them to the state of New Jersey. And right there, you have an impediment that prolongs the uh, uh, the situation for uh, acquiring eminent domain over this land and and building the pipeline. That 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 jeopardizes all the different constituencies: the uh, the investors, uh, the, the people who raise capital, the uh, the operators, uh, the construction organizations, their laborers. Um, so that's you know re uh, relevant to that that last slide that you showed. And one thing that comes to mind, Max, is that it seems like so much of this controversy, uh, even according to your graphic, is is on a local statewide basis, um, local basis, and you have um, local issues that are different from the next state and so forth. Is the, is the, and this is a hard question, but is the federal government doing enough to make these rules consistent, to uh, show leadership on clean energy or energy in general? Um, can't the federal government sort of settle all this down one way or the other and move us into more cleaner and more efficient energy over time? Uh, is the government doing enough or is it not doing enough? Well, I, I think it just varies by which administration is in power. So, I mean, um, the Obama administration, uh, the, uh, the phrase that was always th thrown around was all of the above and none of the below. So, uh, all of the above, wind, solar, renewable energy, none of the below, no fossil fuel. Um, and I, I have to say the EPA was very aggressive under the leadership of Gina McCarthy, uh, Obama's uh, EPA, last EPA administrator, and one of her uh, uh, subordinates, Janet McCabe, at the Office of Transportation and Air Quality. Um, the people who are in place now in, uh, in the Trump administration uh, are not taking it as an aggressive position. In fact, they've relaxed the rules. So from the administrative side, um, you have a consist uh, considerable amount of variability, but then you also have an incredible amount of litigating. So yes, the federal government can set nationwide policies, but once you bring it in within the state, then um, other things begin to happen. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, the point that I made about Texas, Texas is a big surprise. Yeah, you would think that uh, uh, the constituencies in Texas would understand the value of, the, of, of natural gas production, its value uh, as it would be distributed across the United States, especially in the cold weather that we're having now. Yeah. Um, so um, it affects but, uh, the economy of Texas and will continue to affect the economy of Texas for years to come. So you would think they have an economic interest there. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, what about California? We only have a minute left, but uh, there was an issue about uh, emission standards in California. Can you talk about that? Uh, I, I don't know if I can be brief, but I'll, I'll try. So. Um, Moving from natural gas to transportation fuel, gasoline in particular, diesel to, to some degree also, California was provided with a waiver authority because it had severe pollution problems in the early, uh, in, 
1975 when the Clean Air Act was enacted. Um, it used that, the reason we was provided waiver authority is so that it could be more aggressive than the national standard. National standards couldn't uh, be as aggressive as California wanted. So California feels that it still has jurisdiction over greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases are, are a global problem. You can solve them by California policies. Uh, so that has become a point of contention. Uh, the Trump administration wants to uh, remit, uh, I don't know the exactly legal term, but uh, uh, take away California's waiver authority, especially as it relates to greenhouse gases. Uh, that in turn has moved on into issues relating to automobiles. So um, the automobiles are in play because the Obama administration put together uh, uh, a new set of admission standards in 2012, but they left the most aggressive component when the Obama administration would not be in office. That was for 2021 through 2025. Everybody knows those standards are not achievable. You have the technology, but commercially, people aren't going to buy those motor vehicles. So there was a determination um, last August, August 2018, uh, there was uh, a congressional hearing um, in June, and then California decided to cut a deal with three automakers on its own. And now the Justice Department is uh, suing the state of California and these three or four automakers that uh, uh, cut a deal with uh, California on antitrust violations. So it's, you know, I don't know if I went over my minute, but I, I tried to put it in, into, into into that sort of a context, and it's it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, and then are, it's going to wind up in the Supreme Court, isn't it? Um, there is a chance that it might wind up in the Supreme Court, depending on how it gets litigated, uh, and and how uh, things can't get settled and how they get appealed. Yeah, well, the stakes are that if uh, California and the auto dealers win, uh, they'll be able to uh, what in keep maintain the high emission standards. Uh, if they lose, uh, then they'll be forced to um, be consistent with the national, the other states, the national standards, and they'll be able to relax their emission standards. It's a strange right. confluence well, of events, isn't it? It is. It's, uh, I mean, a judge can rule one of three ways. Uh, you, you mentioned two, but the third way is that the judge says, I don't like California standards. I don't like the new Trump administration standards. Just give me back Obama standards. And California has basically admitted through its uh, uh, deal with these four automakers. Uh, and the automakers themselves know that the last leg of this three, three prong uh, uh, set of legislation that the Obama administration put in play, it's unattainable. It can't happen. Uh, it, it just, it's gonna break things. So, <laughs> I, you know, if the judge rules that way, who knows? And I don't know when the, when when that's going to come. Well, up. who knows, Max? Maybe you'll get a call you know, any day now from the judge, and he'll want you to come <laughs> down and explain this to him. <laughs> sure, <laughs> hey, no, I'm more, more than happy to. <laughs> In advance, uh, let me just say that it's great to talk to you. Uh, likewise, I always, likewise I, thank you. I always appreciate our discussions, Max. I don't want to continue. Not only uh, you know, the first point we talked about to see how that evolves but also the emission standards litigation and see how mm -hmm. that evolves. Thank you so much. And your next, absolutely. And your next trip, that barbecue joint in uh, Rockaway and Queens. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank we'll you. Talk, we'll talk to you soon. Mac, Max Pierzira. Uh, uh, Pierre Pierre. And uh, uh -huh. we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Aloha.